welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Myself, Dr. Cecil. Uh, I am presenting today cardiac arrest in pregnancy and perimortem cesarean section as a part of EM Rapid 2024. Cardiac arrest in pregnancy is rare. WHO defines as the maternal deaths as deaths while pregnant or within 42 days of the end of pregnancy related to or aggravated by pregnancy or pregnancy management regardless of the duration of the pregnancy uh, and irrespective of the cause of death. Uh, the factors associated with the pregnancy related deaths are advanced maternal age to increasing life birth order and lack of prenatal care. Coming to cardiovascular changes, as the uterus enlarges throughout the pregnancy, there will be compression of the pelvic and abdominal vessels, especially when supine, mainly the inferior vena cava and it reduces the cardiac output from 10 percentage to 30 percentage and it is known as the supine hypotension syndrome which consists of hypotension, tachycardia, dizziness, pallor and nausea after 30 minutes in supine position. Therefore, uh, place any patient in third trimester of pregnancy in full lat left lateral tilt position uh, whenever she, uh, we find she is in hemodynamic distress or exhibiting hypotension and it can be achieved by uh, placing a roll under the patient's right hip inserting a cardiff wedge or placing the patient in full left lateral tilt while on a back backboard. Avoid femoral or saphenous venous sites for IV access during resuscitation of pregnancy uh, of pregnant women more than 20 weeks of gestation. Coming to respiratory and pulmonary changes, uh, progesterone increase in the resting minute ventilation and tidal volume but does not alter the respiratory rate. So, the point is tachypnea is not a normal part of pregnancy. Changes in pulmonary physiology and increased metabolic oxygen consumption causes rapid development of hypoxia during respiratory illnesses and respiratory arrest. These are a small table showing changes in pregnancy. Uh, system wise, the cardiovascular system. Uh, cardiac output will be decreased by 30 to 50 percentage, uh, peripheral resistance will be decreased by 20 percentage, uh, uh, coming to blood volume it will be uh, 100 ml per kg or 6 to 7 liters it will be increased. Then hematological uh, the fibrinogen factors uh, 5, 7, 8, 9 uh, sorry 10 von Willebrand factor it will be increased. Uh, the main uh, the th uh, thing will be the respiratory and pulmonary, there will be upper airway edema hyperemia and friability. So, uh, this should be uh, keep in mind while intubating the patient. Coming to a small table uh, for the pregnancy related causes of maternal cardiopulmonary arrest. Uh, obstetric complications may be hemorrhage, uh, it can be due to uterine atony, placental abruption, placenta previa, uh, accreta, increta or percreta, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. Uh, severe pregnancy induced hypertension, amniotic fluid embolism, uh, idiopathic peripartum cardiomyopathy, iatrogenic events, failed intubations, pulmonary aspiration, uh, intravascular local anesthetic overdose, drug error overdose or allergies, uh, hypermagnesemia and pulmonary embolism it can be thrombus, air, fat or even amniotic fluid and stroke, and trauma, infection and sepsis. Cardiac arrest in pregnancy, by 20 weeks uterine fundus will be palpable at the level of umbilicus and then from 20 to 32 weeks the fundal height in centimeters will approximate the gestational age for singleton pregnancy. If the fundal height is at or below the umbilicus, uh, resuscitative, resuscitative efforts should focus on mother with no modification of CPR. If the uterus is palpable above the umbilicus, one person should provide a manual left lateral displacement of the uterus while the other should be, will, the other will be performing CPR. Coming to AHA guidelines, um, this is the AHA guideline which showing uh, the high quality CPR defibrillation when indicated and other ACLS interventions like epinephrine. Uh, the, consider the etiology of the arrest, so it will be divided into two perform the maternal interventions and perform the obstetric interventions. Maternal interventions will be perform the airway management, administer 100 percent O2, avoid excessive ventilation, place IV above diaphragm as we said, saphenous and femoral should be avoided. If receiving IV magnesium, stop and give calcium gluconate and continue BLS ACLS according to the algorithm. 
and the obstetric interventions provide continuous lateral uterine displacement, detach all the fetal monitors and prepare for perimortem cesarean delivery. Perform perimortem cesarean delivery if no rose is achieved by 5 minutes in 5 minutes and uh, we can perform uh, perimortem cesarean delivery. Here uh, by the AHA guidelines there are some uh, potential etiology for maternal cardiac arrest. It is divided as ABCD, EFG, H. A is anesthetic complication, B is bleeding, C cardiovascular causes, D drugs, E embolic, F fever, G uh, general non obstetric causes of cardiac arrest and H hypertension. Coming to perimortem cesarean section, AHA recommends the cesarean, cesarean birth if spontaneous circulation has not returned within 4 minutes of maternal cardiorespiratory collapse. Perimortem cesarean or it is also known as resuscitative hysterotomy should be initiated within 4 minutes and delivery of no, newborn should be completed within 5 minutes. It is known as 4 minute roll and 5 minute roll. Perimortem operative vaginal birth using forceps or vacuum if delivery can be achieved within this time frame. So wh why this five, 4 minute rule? It is because uh, irreversible brain, da brain damage occur in non-pregnant individuals after 4 to 6 minutes. Pregnant patients become anoxic sooner. If uterine fundus is above the umbilicus, ineffective resuscitation efforts may become effective when the uterus is no longer gravid. Intact fetal survival diminishes as the time between maternal death and delivery lengthens. Cardiac output peaks immediately after birth. The reasons are, first one is the evacuated uterus contracts the blood from myometrial veins and it, it is auto transfused into the systemic venous system. So, as such the cardiac output increases and the contracted uterus lift off the vena cava which results in greater venous return. Coming to location. Uh, during the maternal cardiac arrest, transporting the patient to OT is not a priority. An emergency cesarean delivery kit, preloaded scalpel, sutures, needle, uh, towel, clips, retractors, forceps, scissors, suction tubes, sponges, keddy clamps, uterine packs, equipment for neonatal care resuscitation should be a part of the that emergency delivery cesarean delivery kit. Broad spectrum antibiotics should be started. Uh, vertical incision can be provided for fast entry and adequate uterine exposure and access to diaphragm. Bleeding may be minimal due to uh, patient is in cardiac arrest so there will be minimal uh, perfusion will be there so bleeding will be also minimal. Extraction of placenta and closure of hysterotomy are important steps to prevent subsequent hemorrhage and we should prevent in, uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Continuous IV infusions of dilute oxytocin solution is recommended or intramyometrial 10 units of oxytocin is an effective alternative. Coming to post arrest care, hyperthermia should be avoided. Induction of mild to moderate that is 32 to 34 degrees Celsius for 24 hours may be beneficial in comatose pregnant patients. In hypothermic undelivered patient, fetal heart rate may have a low baseline 90 to 100 beats per minute with diminished variability which suggests deterioration in fetal status. Delivery should be considered if the fetus is at a viable gestational, at, gestational age at this point of time. What are the outcomes of the uh, cardiac arrest in pregnancy? It is the high maternal and fetal mortality rates. Maternal and neonatal survival depends on several factors. First is the underlying etiology for the arrest. Second, pre-arrest hypotension or hypoperfusion. Then maternal location of the time of arrest in or out of the hospital. Then speed of resuscitative efforts, skills and resources of healthcare providers and comorbidities. Thank you.